Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? I was just getting the, all my stuff set up. So um, I hope everybody's doing well. I'm adjusting my camera. I was trying to get things a little bit closer. That should be a little bit, that's a little bit closer for you guys. Hopefully that helps. Um, I'm going to pull up the feed on my Facebook and see how close I am here. My, um, that looks pretty good too. Okay, so I think we're good. Um, and I hope everybody's well. So uh, make sure you guys say hi, share the feed with all of your friends. And I'm going to go ahead and pin my website here at the bottom of the comments along with the link to the YouTube um, feed. You can watch me on YouTube as well. If, if you like, there's just a little bit of a different view. The YouTube channel just kind of uh, has a wider angle uh, camera, so you can see a little bit more uh, as you go. So um, if you're just joining us for the first time or you're watching the replay, uh, we are on on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Most weeks, um, there are some exceptions for holidays and whatnot. And uh, I come on live and I paint a few crankbaits in a design that's usually new or unique. I have only repeated designs a couple times and they've usually been variations of old designs. And um, I will take questions or suggestions. If you would like to ask any questions offline, you can email me at coloradolures at gmail.com or you can message me on Facebook at Colorado Custom Lures. Um, also, um, I do have a full website, coloradocustomlures.com, and that is where all of my in-stock, ready-to-ship items are available. We have a full uh, line of jigs, we have spinner baits, we have um, all kinds of stuff besides just hard baits, swim baits, jerk baits, crank baits, all kinds of stuff. And so please do check out the website when you can. And share, share, share the feed as well. So. Uh, Let's get started. We're going to do some spring cross as promised. And uh, so I had a request for some spring cross. Rodney, I believe you were the one that asked. So I just decided let's figure it out tonight. Why not? We did brown cross last week and I got some ideas going. And then I'm working this week on getting some of those uh, baby bass cranks and jerk baits, all kinds of different stuff uh, in baby bass pattern ready. I finished up a bunch of customs, and I still have more customs to do, but um, I got caught up with a lot of them, so if you have any questions, again, just go ahead and message me, and um, if you want an update or anything on where I'm at with your stuff, um, I am probably going to start doing um, a quantity minimum for customs. So. If you want to, um, in the spring, usually I need to institute a minimum because I'm so busy and it's really hard for me to stop just to paint one color on one bait and then another color on another bait and another color on another bait. It takes way too much of my time when I'm really busy. So if you want a custom color, I'm probably going to require five each of the same color. They don't all have to be on the same lure, but um, just so that I'm not switching colors over and over again, um, just to make it a little more time, you know, cost time effective, if that makes any sense. If I've already talked to you and told you I would do whatever it is that you wanted, then I'll still do it. But going forward, <clears throat> for each color, I will probably require a minimum, minimum of five each. All right, guys. How's everybody doing? Awesome. Thanks for the feedback, Mike. Glad you like them. Yes, it's very, very cold. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are still out there in the hut working on inspections. Brian does ex inspections at the lake here. We have to have our boats inspected before we get on the water here to uh, prevent invasive species. And um, so they have to be there. Rain, shine, freezing, cold, all of it. And we appreciate that. Anyway, it's about, it's a uh, watch read seven degrees here. Our low is minus two, which is very, very cold for where we live. It's usually 
a little milder here than other parts of Colorado with higher elevation. So I've got two meters going on in my garage tonight. I have my, I had a new heater installed this year because my space, little space heater wasn't cutting it. So uh, we had some, a little bit of work done and I put, we put a better heater in and then we got the second one that I was using last year is running out here too, just to keep it bearable, but it's actually doing pretty well. So it's insulated out here, but um, it's, it's a lot of space. My shop is only like, I get like one third, the boat, the boat gets this. And then our poor cars just freeze outside. Okay, so this is Steinel Res Primer. If you aren't familiar with my show, this is what I use on um, my crank, my water-based paint crank baits. I usually paint with lacquer, but while I'm doing my live show, I'm not going to paint with lacquer without any respirator on. You should never paint without a respirator, period. I only do it once a week, a couple crank baits for my show, and uh, I have a vent fan running behind me as well. So I do always highly recommend that you wear a respirator. This is what I wear while I'm painting. Uh, it has particulate filter that comes off of here and then an organic vapor filter that keeps any um, contaminants out of your lungs. So I do definitely highly strongly urge you to wear a respirator when you're painting. I can feel it when I get done with my show. So if I can feel it after painting like three or four crankbaits, then I know it's not very good for you. So. Make sure you wear some kind of protection. Okay, I'm gonna just spray this out with water. So that was my primer. And I use that um, to uh, improve my adhesion because water-based paints will, um, they don't stick to plastic very very well, but this is a, an acrylic polyurethane. Um, and it, it has a lot better bonding properties than acrylic paint, so it does help. And then I, I actually forgot real quick to grab my transparent base. So give me just one second, or I'll even use balance and clear. If I can't find it in like two seconds. Um, that's fine. So I'm gonna use just a coat of balancing clear here. I forgot to grab that. I try to grab all my colors before I sit down. Sometimes I forget, so. Um, yeah, very, very cold here too, Mark. Thanks for the stars, Billy. Appreciate it. All right. Share the feed, you guys. Would love to see more people on. Who we got on YouTube? A few people. Minus 20. Yeah. Yeah, we're not quite in the negatives yet. I already see that they're, we're probably going to have a delay on Monday for school because it's still supposed to be like single digits Sunday night here and uh, they don't like they don't like to make I don't know they usually delay school here if the temperatures are like below 20 in the morning I'm from Iowa so that seems ridiculous to me but okay I'm gonna put a layer of balancing clear you can use transparent base or balancing clear um, and that is 40 30 you mix this you'll see me use this again tonight I'll mix it with the candy paints it kind of just gives uh, everything something to stick to. It's a polyurethane clear, acrylic polyurethane as well, but it's a clear one instead of a white one. So I'm just gonna spray a light coat of this as a primer on my base that I'm gonna do in transparent, and then I'm gonna spray a chrome one with the same thing. This is gonna cloud up the chrome, but when you clear coat it, you won't see it. You won't see that cloudy finish up. When the clear goes over it, it just pops right back out. So these are uh, my chrome square bills. I did finally get my 1.5s in chrome. So if you've liked some of my chrome designs in the past and you really wanted a 1.5, I have them now. Unfortunately, I got shorted 100. And now it's Chinese New Year, so they're not even answering my messages. I order them straight from the factory that way. Uh, you can't, there's no suppliers in the U.S. that carry square bills in Chrome. So uh, don't ask that question because I can't, I can't give you that answer. Where, where to order them, I can't, give, I can't give you that answer, unfortunately. 
Okay, so white. This is um, opaque. Sorry, that kind of exploded on me. This is Wicked Detail Opaque Flat White. And it's almost empty. There we go. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of 4011 reducer in. You can use 4013 too. Uh, and 4012 might still be out there. Uh, it was discontinued, I thought it was discontinued, um, but some places still have it. It's all the same. I can't tell the difference, but some people might be able to, but I can't. Okay, guys. My Facebook video is clearer. Do you mean the sound? Because everybody has a different opinion about which video looks better. Everybody has a different opinion. It's really kind of funny. Some people say it's way clearer on YouTube. Some people say it's way clearer on Facebook. I know that the sound is not great on YouTube, and I'm probably going to get an extra external microphone. But I haven't picked one yet, and I, I just, I don't know. It's another expense, so add it to the list. So this is just white, and I'm just doing a layer of white primer on here. Yeah, I think that's just depending on where you are, David. It's clear. It's super clear on my computer when I'm, I'm sitting here watching it, and it's extremely clear. So I don't know. It could just be that your YouTube feed is not uh, sampling well or something like that. But I know my compressor, I've heard, sounds really loud. The microphone for my webcam on YouTube seems to pick up my compressor noise a lot. Um, so I'm working on probably getting some kind of an external microphone, like a wireless clip-on or something for right up here. And that should solve the problem, but I haven't ordered it yet. All right, I get one that I set on my desk, but I don't have any room anymore. I'm like, I got no room. Too much equipment. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for the stars, Billy. Appreciate it. I appreciate the shares, you guys. Make sure I didn't miss. Thanks, Byron, for the stars as well. It is very cold here. It is seven degrees. Okay, guys, if I miss any questions, don't be afraid to ask again. Um, I don't intentionally miss questions, but sometimes it just happens. So I'm trying to get the white out of here. We're going to do a spring cross. So yellows, oranges, browns, reds, uh, just a little bit of a different variation. My Reaper Claw, which is more like a Delta Claw. It's got the black and the red and the belly and orange. So, okay, let's start with one in fluorescent. We're going to do a really super bright one. And then I'm going to do a, a chrome one. And I'm going to do a transparent one. And then we're just going to do a regular one, a regular yellow belly. So I'm going to start with a flow just for fun. This is just Create Text Auto Air, I believe. Yep, Auto Air Fluorescent Yellow. So I'm just going to do everything but the top here in flow yellow. You got to do fluorescence over white. Um, Brad, I haven't had a chance to call you back. I've been running all around all weekend. Oh, I just got dirt all over this. What the heck? Okay. That's no good. I'm going to have to clean this one off because I just sprayed dirt all over it somehow. And that's a big not going to work. So let me wipe this one off. I'm going to start over. The See, this is how well the... This gives you a little bit of a sample of how well the Stino Res sticks to the bait. See, I'm wiping off all this acrylic paint and the Stino Res isn't coming off. I mean, you have to, it will eventually, but you have to scrub to get it off. And this is rubbing alcohol that I'm using here. So you have to really scrub to get it off. So that shows you how much better it sticks than a regular acrylic paint. So I think I just had some dirt sitting on my hair dryer. I don't use it very much because I use a, I use lacquer most of the time and lacquer dries instantaneously. 
And um, so I didn't have, I haven't used it. So I think it just had some dirt on it. So let's just kind of reprime this real quick. Um, 16 foot divers. Uh, the best ones I have are probably the DT, um, or I'm sorry, the XDs. I have a DT-16, it's a DT-10 body with a DT-16 bill. Um, and they're really a quality. Um, whether it gets down to 16 foot or not, I'm not sure because I haven't had a chance to try it yet. I, I just got them after it was cold, but this particular model in the regular DT-10 swims really well. So, um, I would guess that it swims good. I just don't know for sure if it gets to 16 feet. If you want to for sure get to 16 feet, then I would just get like a 6XD. Otherwise I have um, I have a super deep diver that's kind of like a Lucky Craft body. And those are, those might go even deeper than 16. Otherwise there's the Fat Papa, which is these big ones here. These big ones, they swim really well and that will get, that should get down to 16 but they're really big too. They're an ounce. So uh, it depends, I guess, on how heavy of a crankbait you're willing to throw. Um, but those are some of the deeper ones that I have. A lot of the, I'm a bit annoyed because a lot of the crankbait manufacturers like to say that their baits go to these depths that they just don't, they just don't go to unless you're like, I don't know fishing them just a very certain way. And I just, I don't know, they're always overestimated. So I try to be semi accurate with the depths when I post them and I try not to overestimate because I think a lot of people do overestimate. And that's kind of frustrating when you get something and like, it's supposed to dive to like 15 feet and you get it and it goes like 10. And you're like, sorry, got hair in my mouth. And you're like, oh. So I try to be accurate. And if they're not accurate, if you get something and you're like, this does not dive as deep as I want, let me know. I can replace it, or at least then I know. So for future reference, I'm not um, advertising impossible depths. I try to test all of them, and to the best of my ability, I estimate the depth, but... Um, There's, I mean, I'm not perfect when it comes to the estimations either, so. This thing, these, this is really making me mad. Oh, whatever. And I'm getting paint on my, I'll get it off later, but. I'm gonna call that good for now because I'm really tired of messing with it. And I'm just gonna, we're, it's just a, we're just doing a prototype, so. If it's not perfect, that's okay. I know somebody will be like, if it's messed up, I'll buy it. <laughs> if I decide not to paint over them and they're blemished, I'll usually just sell them for a discount. But I don't have too many of those. I can usually either fix them or um, something. I don't know. Thanks for tuning in, Chris. Appreciate it. Share the feed if you can. The speed makes the depth. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And trolling will always get you deeper too, but um, I don't know. Alabama craw, the purple Alabama craw, the purple and orange one that I do with the black that I was talking about. Okay, so we're going back to the fluorescent again, and I'm just doing a few different colors in spring craw. I'm doing a bright fluorescent, I'm doing a chrome, and I'm doing a transparent, and then just a regular yellow, and I'm gonna kind of just fly through these. So I don't know if you guys can see. If you can't see, tell me you can't see, and I'll try and adjust my camera angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. I can't really see the Facebook feed on my tablet. It usually cuts me off at some point and just stops streaming it because we have too many things going on in this house. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get it so you guys can see okay. 
my battery. Hang on a second, guys. Oh, there we go. Is that plugged in? For some reason, my computer is saying my battery's low. But it doesn't make sense because it's plugged in. Hang on one second, guys. Oh, is that it? Sorry. Sorry for the, the mess here. I just want to make sure that my camera, whoops. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, I had my um, switch was needed to be reset. It wasn't charging my computer. I didn't want to lose my YouTube feed. Okay, so let's go to regular yellow on this next one here. This is Wicked Detail Yellow. And you probably can't see me very well here, so I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try and make sure you guys can see this, but it's tough. You'll lose me uh, to some degree. Yeah, it's on. This is all. Okay, will you fix it then, please? It's really hard for me to do this all by myself. Chris is fixing it. All right, so this is just Wicked Detail Yellow. So we're just going to do like a regular spring crawl with a traditional yellow here. And I'll have to do a few coats of this. Okay. He's trying to get the camera angle better. It's really hard for me to do it by myself. Get all of them just right. Two more months. Yes, I would, Chris. Um, if you want to send lures to paint, just shoot me a PM, please. You can't see the bait. Is that is it fixed or not fixed? It's better. It's good. It was good before you moved it just now, Chris. They were saying it was good. Okay. Yeah, if you want me to paint uh, like some branded lures that you have, as long as they're in good condition. And um, if it's a pattern that I don't already paint, um, I'm going to be doing a minimum of five each for order starting like now because spring is coming and and I need to get caught up. And one of one of each color really slows me down. So just make sure that you have a decent order. It's just yellow. It's just wicked detail yellow. If this light is maybe a little too bright, you're getting too much glare, I think. Let me turn it down just a little bit. Is that a little better? I'm not sure. Yeah, can't sorry. see me much at all now, but no, just my mouth that never stops moving. Which one? Facebook. The YouTube. Up. You can only see my oh, nose like and mouth. Now just that's okay. Just leave it. That'll be okay. That one's too close, but I moved it closer because everybody was saying it was too far away. So we're just still figuring it out the exact perfect look perfect location for the the cameras. It'll be fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to um a transparent uh, yellow. This is um, bright yellow. It's a transparent, and I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the sides of uh, this clear one, and I'm going to do um, the whole bottom of the chrome one in this color. I just lost my paintbrush. There it is. Chris is good. He's just been chilling on his day off. Share the feed if you can, guys. I appreciate the shares. Plenty of people are at home chilling, I'm sure, in this weather. And we'd love to see more people on. If you're just tuning in, we're painting some spring cross. So we're doing a transparent here. So this is just bright yellow. Um, 
just regular Createx, um, transparent bright yellow is this color. So it's kind of like just lemon yellow. And then I'm going to do uh, the whole bottom of, this is a chrome 2.5 square bill. And I thought it might be kind of fun to do a chrome one, just to see how it turns out. Now the chrome is going to look a little cloudy right now. If you just um, join us, the reason is because I put some balancing clear on it to get the paint to stick better. But when you clear coat it, this will just come out super shiny. You won't see that. Uh, you won't see that like fuzzy look. It won't have that anymore. Um, and if I had a clear, I don't have one in front of me, but I would show you a clear coated chrome one if I had one in front of me, but I don't right now. If you want to see one, you can tell me and I'll, I'll grab one. But um, I don't know that I have any on my website right now. I just got the 1.5s and another batch of 2.5s. So I just never have enough time to paint everything I want to do. It's like a race against time all the time. Life, you know. All right. All right, so there's your there's your chrome yellow, and I don't know if this light being brighter or lighter is more helpful. It's pretty light right now, but. so I don't know if that takes away from you being able to see the color. But that's the um, chrome. So let's do some orange now. Um, you can send. Hang on. Oh yeah, my husband is Chris. Chris Holly. Sorry, <laughs> that gets kind of confusing. Yes. I am Krista, he is Chris, and then we have a Chris talking in the comments, and that gets a little confusing. All right, so um, I'm gonna wipe out the yellow and go on to a uh, little bit of uh, orange on the belly of these. Well, actually, I'm gonna wait on the orange. Well, I'll do the candy orange on the clear one. So I'm going to put, um, sorry, I'm trying to get all the water out of there. A little bit of balancing clear in here. This is the 4030, just a few drops. And then grabber orange. This is a uh, candy 2O, auto air candy 2O in grabber orange. Now this stuff goes a long way. So, you know, just a couple of drops should do it. That's it. And candy paints are dyes. They are not actually paints. So um, you have to mix them with the balancing clear. Otherwise, you're going to find they run really easily. And this helps them not to run so much. But you still have to be careful how much you put down at once. Or you will run into issues with the paint running. And by running, I mean it'll just cool up. And it'll start to spider from the air pressure. So just put a little bit on and then dry it, and then just be careful. That's all I'm saying. I did get them, Arthur. You must have missed me saying that. I did get Chrome 1.5, and I was telling you, um, I ordered 200, and they only gave me 100, and I was like, they won't respond to my messages now because it's Chinese New Year, so like everything shuts down in China for a little over a week. And then I also got, there's another um, distributor, uh, who sells blanks and I got one of his orders in my box too and luckily I know I know him and I know they're his so I had to shoot them to him but I only got part of my order and I got his so anyway I have I still have a hundred so so we'll we'll be okay for a while so if you want anything in Chrome and 1.5 they're coming I'll be doing some of everything a little bit of everything uh, is that jointed rainbow swim bait hanging on a pegboard? Oh, this one over here. This is super dusty. I was painting this for uh, my husband's stepdad. This is actually a spro. This is a, I messed the tail up and it got really dusty and I got really busy and I just never finished it. So this is actually one of the BBZs, the soft tails. This is not a knockoff. It's actually the brand. I do have more of these. So if you want one, go ahead and PM me. I have sinkers and I have floaters. Um, and I have, they just need to be repainted. 
So if you want one, just let me know. And how much? Um, I haven't even thought about that. So PM me and I'll figure out a price. So that's pretty. So this is Grabber Orange and Transparent Yellow. And it's much brighter in person than it looks on my screen right now. It's much prettier in person. Um, so that'll look really good when it's done. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit of a line of that rubber orange down the middle of the chrome belly. But I'm gonna leave it yellow for the most part. And again, you have to be careful how much, how much you put down. Yeah, the problem with the chrome ones, they take forever to, to come in. So I won't probably get like my um, other 100. It'll, it'll be months before I get more. They have like a chrome. They use, they outsource the chroming. The factory that I get my square bills from, they outsource the chrome. And the people who make it, they just take or ever to send them back. So um, I'm kind of, you know, I'm really kind of upset that I got shorted, but whatever. It is what it is. I have a lot of 2.5, so if you can throw a 2.5, I've got like 300 of those. They had to screw up the ones that I had, that I was like, didn't have any of, right? Let's go to red now. So we're going to do, um, I'm going to do transparent, um, bright red. And I'm going to do like, I'm trying to decide if I want to do a scale pattern on the top or if I just want to blend it. I think I'm just going to, um, let's do a little scale pattern and then I'll just do regular red too. So let me grab a scale. I'm thinking like a small, sorry about that mess. I'm thinking like a small scale pattern. These are just like a tool material like you would find on like a tutu. And it's kind of stretchier than that though, so it doesn't scratch your bait. You can, I get it at Walmart, but not all Walmarts have it, so you have to kind of look around. Um, okay, guys. <laughs> We're just making sure I didn't miss any, any comments here, guys. Yes, my cup. These cups. You guys have to check out their business, nailandpale.com. You can post your link if you want, Sabrina. Uh, they make, they are a veteran-owned business, and they make uh, really cool they make cups and wood decor and all kinds of really super cool stuff. And the detail that goes into everything they make is meticulous. And beautiful. I have a really cool burned American flag that they made in my living room that I gave to Chris for Father's Day uh, a couple years ago. So um, there's the red. There's a red um, scale pattern. I'm just messing around. So if these turn out like crap, I just don't make any more of them. So don't judge me on my decisions right now. It's all experimental. But yeah, Sabrina's made my koozie. She's made, she makes these tumblers and they're awesome. That got really runny for some reason. I feel like I got water on something somewhere, but I think it's okay. It should be okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do some shading now. So I'm just gonna go along the shoulders in red. I'm just shading this. This is really bright. So I'm thinking that next time I would use more of a, a crimson red, maybe, instead of this bright red. It's not even really blending into orange. It's kind of just really staying very, very red. Um, and it's really bright. So I'm not really digging this at all. I think it needs to be more like um, a less offensive red, but maybe you guys disagree. So I don't know. I shouldn't assume that you agree with me. So I just kind of blended that down. It's really bright. 
I'm going to thin it out and maybe blend it down a little bit further, but we'll see how it turns out. And we're going to be doing some brown over the um, shoulders, just a traditional um, spring craw color. Yeah, I don't, I just don't like how that's blending at all. But you live and you learn, so it looks just, I don't know, super mediocre for me. But oh well. Okay, I'm gonna try something different on this fluorescent one because I don't like how that turned out. You can you can draw like crazy. I can't draw, so we all have our strengths, right? <laughs> I know, Sabrina, I know. You know, my parents finally got their vaccine. They got one shot, and I'm excited. I want mine. You all can feel how you want about it, but I want mine. I'm like, I'm ready to be back to normal. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do some orange this time, and I'm actually going to go back to my candy. And we're going to see how that looks. Blended over... This stuff, I'm gonna try a little bit of orange. And then, oh, another thing I was gonna do is um, some tangerine and then candy red over it. So we're gonna try a couple different things here. So this is the Grabber Orange and I am going to put a little bit of that on this fluorescent and I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm not gonna bother with any kind of a texture. We're just gonna blend colors. So that gives you almost, it almost looks a little bit um, autumn-like color-wise. I don't know if you can see that at all. It's kind of like a, uh, like a rusty orange, and with the red over it, that might look kind of good, actually. So we'll see. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's kind of like a deep orange when you spray it over top of that. And I'm so debating whether I should put orange on this underneath the red, and I think I am going to. So I'm going to actually shade the top here a little bit on this chrome one with some of the grabber orange. And then we'll go over that with blood red, which is also a candy paint. So it's super shiny. I just love the chrome. It's like my most fun thing ever. It's so shiny. It's mesmerizing. Okay, I'm going to clean this out now. And then we're going to switch to a uh, pearlized orange for this transparent one. And I'm going to see if that makes the candy blood red pop with a little bit of a pearl coloration. I really have no idea if it's going to work. Oh, I know. I'm ready to feel normal. I want to see your BB. She just had a baby. He's so cute. All right. You got your mouse back from the fish. Found it floating. Ooh, at least you got it back. That's good. Getting it back is uh, always fun. I always think, like, I wonder how many people have found my lures floating in our reservoir out here because uh, of how many Chris has lost. He's listening. He's like, shh. I've lost plenty too, but he fishes a lot more than I do. Uh, hey, Jason, how's it going? You found me on YouTube. So I did post the YouTube uh, link at the bottom. If you guys want to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, either you can watch me either place, either YouTube or Facebook. The view is just a little different. Okay, so we're going to go with some, uh, this is Pearl Tangerine. It's just regular Createx Pearl Tangerine. And I'm going to spray that over the top, the high sides is what we call it in the world of lure painting. It's just basically like the shoulder of the bait. I'm going to dig this, this transparent one, I think, but we'll see. And the chrome one. And I, I mean, I don't really care for the bright red one that I just did yet, but I never say never. But I'm digging the rest of them so far. 
and whatever I like, I will end up painting for the store if I ever get caught up, which seems to never happen. So um, this is this is looking pretty cool, actually. It's just a pearly uh, orange color over top of the transparent yellow, and that's a candy orange belly. And we're gonna do some red on that too. So I'm gonna actually shoot. I'm gonna shoot a little bit of this on top of this candy orange on this one too. I just kind of like the pearl. I think the pearl is gonna help that candy red pop up a little bit. And I could be wrong, but. I just want to see what happens. I need to get a different candy red. Um, maybe like the uh, Auto Air candy red. Because Candy O2, their reds are not very bright. They're like, uh, they have blood red, which is kind of, you know, it looks like blood. So it's a dark red. Um, and it's just a little different. A little different than... The candy apple reds that you see, like with uh, lacquer, I have House of Color candy apple red, which weirdly has a little bit of pearl in it, so isn't quite perfect either. Because I like the option of having one that doesn't have pearl in it. And it's also real expensive. If you've not ever heard of House of Color paints, they're just the really high end. Not, I mean, there are more expensive automotive paints even than that, but. They're pretty expensive, um, a, a pretty expensive lacquer paint that people use for automotive work a lot too. Okay, so um, this is Candy Blood Red, and I'm gonna go over the, the tangerine with this. And I'm going for like a pearly red without spraying a pearl red. If you've ever looked for pearl reds in your you know, an airbrush artist or a painter, you'll notice that all the pearl reds are kind of almost pink by the time you get pearl in them, and it doesn't look right. To me, it does not look right. They look pink. So one way to get around that is to spray, um, to spray like a pearl down, either a white pearl, or you can do orange, depending on what you want it to look like. And then spray like a transparent red or a candy red over top. And then you get the pearl effect without actually painting a pearl red color. If that makes any sense. So that is looking pretty sweet. Um, it looks totally different if I put my hand in front of it. You can see um, probably the colors look different. But it's got that pearly look. Um, but still has the, uh, it's still red, still dark. So that looks good, I like that. Okay, let's do the red over top of this one too. And I'm really not liking the bright red, so I'm just gonna work, work with this and see how this works on this color too. I'm gonna let this sit for just a second because it's kind of thick, and then I'm gonna move on to this one. And we'll do the red shoulders over the orange here. Again, being careful how much you put down because this stuff will run. Hope everybody's staying warm. Pickerel, like, you mean like a um, pipe? I actually have somebody, I gotta get back to Chris Weber if you're out there, Chris. He wants to jerk bait in a, a pike and I am going to do that. So if that interests anybody else, please let me know now so I don't have to do it and then come back to it again. I have done a pipe pattern before, but it's been a hot minute since I've done that. It's pretty detailed, but like um, I can make my own stencils because I have a silhouette cameo and I can cut them myself. And so it is time consuming to make the stencil, but once I have once I have the design, I'm good to go. So that is gonna look freaking sweet when I get done. I don't know if you can see that very good on YouTube or not, but it's super shiny and that is your red on top. And it looks 
mom.com and I'm gonna go over this bright ugly ass red with this blood red to try and tone it down a little bit because I don't like it. It's supposed to be transparent red. Right? This is a really good color for like gill plates and stuff, but it's not very transparent. I mean, it might be if you're on chrome or clear, but it is really bright. So let's just tone it down and call that. That looks better. It's still bright, but. It's also kind of spattery on the sides, and I don't do that either. Okay, and you can always back blend that too, and I might do that. I could show you how to do that if you want. You can get rid of that overspray if you want to. Um, it just takes a couple extra steps, so you gotta be patient if you want it to look perfect. But once you get good at it, it isn't as time consuming as uh, it was at the beginning. So you always have to remember practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the faster it gets. So I'm just using some rubbing alcohol to get all of this candy red residue out of my bowl. Otherwise, it'll mix with whatever paint I use next and um, it'll all be tinted pink. So um, I'm just using a disposable um, paintbrush and I'm rubbing all, all around the sides with the, the paintbrush to try and get all of that out. All right, so that should be good. These paper towels are terrible. Cheap ones, terrible. Not warm in Missouri? Yeah, I, Richard is probably, might not be on right now, but he uh, sent me some pictures of Missouri and it looks pretty cold. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Gator and Python chase my mouse bait. Oh my God, I would die. Awesome, Chris. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's not warm either. We, we are in like a desert climate, and it's not. It's so cold here right now, even. Okay. So let's hit the back with some browns and maybe even green on one of these. Let's start with green on one of these, just for a little variety. This is Wicked uh, Wicked Detail Moss Green. And I'll uh, I'll try that on the one that I'm not digging as much, and we'll see how that looks. And I was gonna back blend this one too with yellow because it looks terrible on the sides. This is just Wicked um, Detail Moss Green, and it probably isn't even gonna look very green because when we go over the red, it's gonna change the color altogether. It actually looks more brownish black than anything right now. It doesn't really even look green over the red, which is fine. It actually looks pretty good. You never know how these are going to layer until you actually do it. I'm going to trace around the eyeballs just a little bit here with this. Um, and then let me back blend this a little bit to get some of this. Um, hang on. I'm going to get my regular white that's pre-mixed because that one is almost empty. Where are you? Um, here it is. Okay, sorry about that smidge. And then I'll put yellow over it to get rid of some of this. There's a little bit of overspray on there, like a lot bit of overspray if you can see it or not. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'll show you how to do that. Can I use the colors they use for plastic baits? Can you use them in my air gun to paint hard lures? So I am using colors for hard baits. Do you mean soft plastic? The answer to, the answer to that is no. Um, but you can spray them, but you they will not work on um, regular baits. You can't, the, the baits for, the paints for soft plastics are completely different than the paints for crankbaits. And they're not interchangeable really at all. Some people will use acrylic paints on soft plastics and then dip them in plastisol afterwards. And you can do that. But if that top coat of plastisol gets compromised, it'll just like peel off because there's no adhesion really. Um, but the acrylic paint in the way 
I mean, I don't know. I think you're better off buying the SB coat paints, which are really super nasty, nasty um, solvent paints that are intended to etch the surface of a soft plastic base and stick without any clear coat. And if you can do that, that's the way to go. And you need good ventilation to do that. So it's not necessarily a simple solution. I have them and I use them. So um, I've tried all that stuff. And I'm here to say that you gotta just probably try not to cut corners and do it the right way versus trying to find a one size fits all approach to the problem. Um, and that's that's my recommendation anyway, if that's what you were asking. If you're not, then everybody else just learned something new. Okay. You just need really good ventilation to use SB coat paints. And I have pretty good ventilation, so I don't really, and I wear a respirator. So it's not really a problem if you're protected, but you gotta be protected otherwise. It's a no -go. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to brown. Just I did the green and it looks pretty good. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the white that I blended back with. And then I have to go back over it with yellow because we're not gonna leave it white. Um, and then I'll do my brown on the tops of these. And then we'll do some craw detail. And we'll see how they turn out. So this is the yellow I used on that one. This is just um, detail bright yellow. You don't necessarily have to thin the detail paints all the time. They're pretty thin. It's snowing on South in South Pueblo, really. I feel like it's been snowing for like five days here, but not much. It won't, your question won't post. I don't know. Detail moss green is the magic sauce. Yes, it is. That and sepia are very much must-have colors. I don't know if I can see all of these comments. I'm trying to scroll down, but I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if I have to. Uh, can I hold it to the camera closer? You mean when I'm painting, Chris? Probably not. Um, it's just too difficult. I can show you after I spray what I did, but I can't, I can't like just hold it here and paint. Um, and if I, if I set my camera up, so it's facing down, then no one can see and like people don't really like that either. So we've had this discussion on my Facebook page this past week and came to the conclusion that we're going to leave it how it is basically. So I'll do the best I can to show you what I'm doing as I go, but I can't really uh, paint right in front of the camera. And I can't do multiple angles. A lot of you guys asked about that. I don't know how to do that. I, I'm not a video, I, I'm not that experienced. I don't know how to do those things. So I'm not gonna be able to um, do crazy multiple angles, switching back and forth. And I'm just me by myself. I don't have um, anybody helping me. So um, it's just not a, it's just not a realistic option. Okay, so let's go to a brown now. This is sepia, detail sepia. Again, it's wicked detail sepia, whatever that is hanging there. This stuff sprays like crap. I got a bad batch and I've never replaced it. So I'm gonna go over this uh, back. Hi guys. Yes, I can paint HUDs. South Louisiana. Really? You guys are supposed to get snow? My brother's in Baton Rouge. I, I can't even imagine. Their kids are gonna be so excited. <laughs> All right. So sepia on the back here. All right, I'm gonna just do a little dry here. Okay. 
So I'm just going right over the top, basically. I'm not trying to blend it down too much. I don't want to cover the red. And I might tweak some of these patterns a little bit um, and come up with one good pattern. In the end. So that, that one, I'm digging that color a lot. So this is the, the brown top, and then the transparent yellow. Then that's tangerine on the side, on the top sides with blood red, and then grab her orange candy belly. And then you wanted to see the green on the back. It, it really looks like blackish brown almost. So that's what that color looks like. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do some sepia on the top of this one. <clears throat> Will do, Brad. All right. Just going to shade the top here, and that comes out, that came out too fast, of course. I don't know why, but Seppi is one of those colors that, I don't know, for whatever reason, I have had a lot of problems with it, um, like chunking up and getting, I don't know how to explain it. Like you get dried bits of paint or something in the bottle and then it, likes to lock up while you're trying to spray it. All right. Again, if you just want to see what's in stock, go to coloradocustomallures.com. Everything I have available for order is there. And then if there's anything you want painted in general, shoot me a PM. If you have something else that you want painted that's not in stock or whatever. So I'm just doing light layers because I don't want it to run. And then I just do a little heat set in between. So we're getting there. I want to make sure that that's a fairly solid brown on the top. Just kind of lightly fading over the shoulders into the red, but not much. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I think. I'm not going to do much more with that. I dig that color a lot. And then we're going to do the top of this. Um, this is the chartreuse spring crop. And I'm going to darken the top of this one. I might end up using the moss green because I like um, it sprays better and... It actually looks brown. I just scraped that with my hair dryer. And that, yeah, see, it just came out way too fast and it's like all jacked up now. It's frustrating. That's why I like lacquer paint. Don't have those problems anymore. I'm gonna call that good. It went over a little bit on the tail. I don't know if you could see it got too thick right here because it came out too fast. But it's all good. Okay, so I'm cleaning this out, and I'm going to go and head and do some, uh, I don't know if I want to put any texture on these. I think I'm just going to go straight, crawl lines and go, because I don't want to mess them up with texture or any of that malarkey. So let's just go ahead and put crawl lines on them. This is my stencil that I made myself. I drew this. 
with Apple Pencil on an app called Autodesk Sketchbook. And um, then I used the drawing to make this cut file for my Silhouette Cameo. And that is how I made this stencil. I do not sell stencils. So don't make Insane Custom Stencils is a good place to go. Or um, Backwater Outfitting carries 3D stencils. Those are the good places to go. Or Cedar Run Outdoors has a few too, but not many, I don't think. Or they actually do help quite a few. I don't use a lot of 3D stencils, but yes, I do bass fish. Not tournament fishing or anything. I'm also a full-time stay-at-home mom. And so I don't have as much time with this business and my kids to fish as my husband does. That's his big hobby, but I do fish, yes. And bass, mostly, yes, is what we are, what we target. My husband runs the American Bass Association Tournament Trail for Colorado. So he is the big tournament fisherman. I have fish tournaments, but I, not regularly. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, of course, Chris. No problem. I try to answer all the questions, but sometimes it's kind of, sometimes I miss them. I'm not, I'm not perfect. So some days I get a lot more questions than others, and some, some live shows I have a lot more views than I do on other days. Um, so it just depends. If you're watching the replay, make sure you PM me your question or I might not see it. I'm on um, Saturday night, so if you're not watching Saturday night at like 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, between 7 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, you're probably watching the replay. So if you have questions, Questions and you're watching the replay, just make sure that you send me a PM or I might not see your question. So there's my cross stencil when it's all done. It doesn't go across the back, but I can freehand that because I've been doing this a little, a little while. And I usually create some shadowing on the back. Um, and I also have a 3D stencil in a crop pattern that I use. Um, and uh, that looks okay, but it doesn't look it doesn't look as good as this one, probably. Maybe that's just my bias because I made it. I don't know. They're easier, but the other issue with the 3D stencils sometimes is they only work for one type of lure because they fit. You know, they fit tight to your to your lure, so they only fit one. Style, so you have to buy a stencil for every single. You have to buy a stencil for every single one you paint. Um, and I paint a lot of different styles, so for me, it it's um, easier just to make my own that I can use on a variety of different. Colors. So I'm just connecting my lines here across the back, and uh, I just made this one on the corner here you know, go up to the lip so there wasn't a gap there, and that's all I'm doing. So I'll trace across the back here on this one, just connecting the, the lines and um, drawing fine lines with an airbrush is just something that you get used to over time with trigger control and um, like air pressure. You can't, it's hard to see this uh, probably on the camera because the back of this is dark already. And you don't have to be super accurate on the back of a craw because I don't leave my lines really defined. You know, you're going to have some overlap and shading on a natural craw. So I do some shading in the craw plate anyway. And then right in front on the top one because that's how they look. So that will cover up any little mistakes that you make on the tops of these where they connect together. Okay, now the belly, um, and I'm gonna shade a little bit on the nose here and the eyes, just to give it kind of like that dark nose look. Just like that. 
just how a crawfish looks, you know. And then across the belly, you'll do some lines. This one is definitely going to be remade, I'm telling you right now, because I super, I think it looks really good. Um, and I think that, I think you guys will buy it. That's what I think. So you can just take any um, card you have or straight line. I'll just grab these. This is a sheet of, like, dot stickers that I get from clear bags when I buy my boxes. So I'm just going to curve it around the bottom of this first shelf plate where it meets up with the little shelf plate. If you can see what, how I'm doing that right there. See? And then I'm just going to shade a little line across the belly right along the edge of this. And then, oops, that didn't even really show up. Let's do a little bit more. Now you can see it a little bit. You see that line right there on the belly? Okay, and then I'll do another one right behind it. And then just keep going until you have about five or four or five. Minutes. Just keep moving it down. And then it'll look like a belly of a crop. So you can see the little, little overlapping um, belly pattern there and that's how you get the natural look on that you can even throw some glitter on these I don't really like to do glitter because um, it's extremely time consuming but it looks super good I will give you that so let's do our chartreuse one too I feel like this could use some flare but I'm not sure what that's gonna be I don't know like it needs some kind of texture to make it more exciting. Any ideas? I'll take ideas. I'll take ideas if anybody has any. I'm literally just spraying straight over the stencil, and it'll go right into the cracks. This one is a little heavier than the last one was, but it's okay still. So it's just a little heavier um, on the spray. It wasn't intentional, intentional, but there's going to be some variation between one lure to the next. You could probably uh, do some orange on the belly of this to get, uh, it would give you a little bit of contrast on the belly. I don't know. What do you guys think? This one's wet. I'm going to, I'm going to go a different one. I have a couple of these for each one. So that way one side of the stencil gets wet and then you have you got two. So you don't ever have to stop and dry your stencil off because you have more than one. Okay, so I just sprayed straight on again. And there's your line. I hold it just like with my hand on the bait. It's just kind of like rigged up there and some people can't stand to do that. So a lot of people will use these helping hands and then they'll put it on the hand and then they'll hold the stencil up and then they'll spray. And I find that to be, I don't know, too slow. So that's how I do it. That and my hands aren't that steady either. So you yeah, gotta hold it up. Like I'd rather just press it on and that way it doesn't move when I'm painting. Like, my hands are decently steady, but that's hard to do. It's hard to, like, hold a stencil up to something in the air and, like, spray it without moving it. Even if your hands are steady, it's not easy. So there's the shaded, um, the shaded bath on that to the chartreuse belly. And I actually super dig this one, too. So what do you guys think? Orange on the belly, probably a little flow orange. Or do you think regular orange or no? Just don't touch it. Don't touch it, lady. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. I had a, I actually had a request for a spring crop. So I, did, I just did a little Google search, and I knew that they were yellow and whatnot. But um, I looked for some exact descriptions. And so this, this uh, because I got that request, I decided why not do a show on it. 
And uh, I did a spring crawl last year that kind of had a similar, similar color pattern, but that came out really fast. Let's see if it's okay. It's okay. Yes, we're good. Good, glad you guys like it. Which one do you like the best? I'll, I'm gonna have to do a poll on my site. I'll have to do a poll on my site about which one everybody likes better. I'm almost certainly gonna do the Chrome one, um, but you guys can can let me know. I have one more to scale after this, and then um, then you can tell me which ones you like, which ones you like if you want. I almost ran out of paint, and when, the worst thing is running out of paint. When you're in the middle of stenciling, oh, it's the worst. But you got to hold your stencil right in place before while you get your paint. Not good. Oh, yeah, this one is ruined. I ruined it. My bad. Look at. Let's do splatter on it. I'll save it with splatter, but um, I use like usually I use lacquer paint, and I wouldn't have run it into this problem to begin with. But I screwed this one up. I hate. Stuff happens, guys. When you screw something up like that, you just splatter it. Splatter fixes everything. So let me fix this uh, bottom part and then I'll splatter it just to save it. And we'll just see what it looks like too while we're at it, right? My paint just seems to be angry and coming out like, oh God, that's so bad now. Okay, I totally screwed this one up. So here's how you splatter. Just turn your turn your air down. I have um, quick disconnect with an air hose. It, it's got air control on it. It's just like a little, it's just like a little turny thing right here. It turns my air down. Must have. So you hold the trigger back and then you just push down on the air. So hold the trigger back to let the paint run onto your needle and then just push the air down. Just don't make sure you don't do both at the same time on top of your bait or you'll just spray like a big puff of black paint. So you got to practice um, doing this on a non-bait object first. The lines aren't even good on this, so I don't know. Just look at one side and you'll be happy. Okay. So you get the idea. This is what the, the, the good side looks like. It's gonna be super shiny when it's cleared. It'll be just like that orange on the bottom. This will all come up really super clear when it's clear coated. So be ready for those, they're definitely coming. What do you think of the splatter? What do you guys think? Should I splatter these when I do the finished product? <laughs> or no, no. All right, so this is the one with the regular yellow belly. So this is more of a traditional spring crock color. How long am I on? Probably just another five minutes, 10 minutes or so. Uh, you are looking at pre-wrap wiggle warts. They're brown translucent was the most expensive. Yes, and I have done, actually, did, I did a show painting that color one time, and it was okay. Oh, you want to see yours, Dwayne? So this is a blank that I got, and I know I, I haven't fished it yet, but I know somebody that has fished these a lot, and he says they're really good. So I, I trust him very much, too. He's super picky, so... 
There's the red craw in that one. And then um, you got the circuit board. This is the circuit board square bill. And this is my um, cold water craw pattern. And then the root beer. This is the root beer in um, that same circuit board crankbaits. Those are the ones that Dwayne ordered that he wanted to see. Okay. There's your sneak peek. Um, the one in my hand, this one, this one, the yellow, the regular yellow, chrome. Uh, let's see here. Chrome one is the best. You like the color without the crop. Oh, you like this color without the crop pattern? The chrome or this one right here? Or this regular yellow one? The chrome? Well, I can do that without the, without the crop pattern. I know what you're saying, yeah. That's a good color for spring in general. Or fall. This is turning out better than I better than I thought it was going to. The um, my webcam has a hard time focusing on um, objects super close up. It seems. I'm noticing that on my uh, laptop anyway. I'm look. I'm watching the YouTube feed on my laptop, and then I have my um, your comments coming across Facebook on my iPad. But I can't watch the Facebook video. It won't. It won't work for some reason on my iPad. It doesn't. It always cuts me off. I don't know why, but it just does. So there's the yellow one. The plain yellow. So let me connect the dots on the back here. This is more of a traditional um, spring straw color. I might do just like some of all of, all of them. So I got a PM, sorry. Black back. These are spring cross are supposed to be brown, 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 brown. This is actually uh, is this the one I did in green? I used a moss green and it kind of came out like a brownish black, a brownish greenish blackish color. I like to shade my eyeballs on these because and the nose a little darker. All right, so there's the um, the regular spring craw, and then this is the one that I back blended the yellow on because I got and I kind of like it actually. Now how I I don't know it turned out pretty good actually. So let's do the belly on this. Transparent with no pattern. Blank purple powder blue with orange line down middle craw. You totally lost me on that one. I'm sorry. I just don't have any reference as to what you're talking about. If you're giving me a color suggestion that's totally separate from this show, PM me, uh, and I can maybe do it like next week or something. I'm always looking for ideas, you guys. I don't. Mag Wiggle Warts. So they have a new blank Mag Wiggle Wart that I want to order. It's not available in the States. I have to order it from uh, overseas. They all come from China, guys. Even the ones that the brand name companies make, they all come from China. So don't start with me on that. Unless it's whittled out of wood in the garage, they're from China. Um, anyway, I want to order it and see how they run. Um, but I can repaint Meg with awards if you have like originals that you want me to paint. I can do that. Um, so. I've done it all pretty much by now. Even like high end, like I do soft plastic. 
I've done Huddleston's. I've, I've done all of that. So there's your spring craw, traditional color spring craw. Okay. Here's the chrome. Um, I didn't do any belly lines on this one yet, but I screwed this craw. So I let, look at this side because I screwed up the... I screwed up the other side. I made a mistake. And then here's the, the transparent. There's the transparent. And then I just put black eyes on all my craws because that's what craws look like. If you uh, don't like black eyes, I can always try something else, but chartreuse, spring craw. Maybe I might throw some fluorescent orange on the belly of that one. So anyway, uh, maybe I'll, when they're done, um, maybe I'll clear them on up. I'll throw them up on my website. I'll do a, I can't do polls and I can't figure out how to do a poll on my business page. And I don't know why they don't let you do that, but um, I will just maybe post four pictures and then everybody likes the ones that they like the best, but then everybody ends up liking all of them and then I have no answers. So. Anyway, I'll just deal with that when it comes. So um, if you guys have any other questions aside from what we discussed here, um, yeah, I've held the stencils down as well. Um, I have done that. Uh, sometimes you spill your paint doing it that way. It depends what I'm doing, but I have done that as well. Um, yes, the matte valve, yeah. So um, it's, a, it's Grex that makes this adjustable, um, air valve it's the grex gmat valve and you can get it on uh, amazon has it or um, probably coast airbrush i don't know i can send you a link if you want if you want it um and you guys have a good night i guess we're all done so stay warm bring your pets inside stay stay healthy and safe and uh, i will see everybody next week take care